These are devotions for people at a social distance. Well, once again, it seems we are in uh, what you might call disaster season, particularly in terms of storms. And as we think about uh, the recovery from the aftermath of a uh, hurricane and post-tropical storm uh, Fiona here in the Maritimes and Newfoundland, and as we think of other, other uh, places like um, Puerto Rico that were in its path, and those places that lie right now, even as I speak, in the path of Hurricane Ian, uh, it is a time for disaster. And how the big question is, how do, we, how do we deal with disaster? How do we recover from disaster? And I just thought about um, this passage, really kind of struck me this morning as I was reading. It's from Jeremiah chapter 33, starting at verse 4. For thus says the Lord God, the, the God of Israel, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the houses of this city, Jerusalem, and the houses of the kings of Judah that were torn down to make a defense against the siege ramps and before the sword. They are coming to fight the Chaldeans and to fill them with dead bodies of those whom I shall strike down in my anger and my wrath, for I have hidden my face from this city because of all their wickedness. So this is the city of Jerusalem facing a disaster, not a hurricane, but an invading army. And uh, as a result of this, uh, it, in particular, it seems that a number of houses were torn down to build defenses, which, of course, was, was not an uncommon strategy in the ancient world. If your city was under siege, you would tear down uh, houses to build you know, walls and defenses, um, but of course, what often happened was it was the houses at the exterior of the city, the houses of the most marginal, the poorest people that generally got torn down in order to protect uh, the, the heart of the city where the, the wealthy and the powerful lived. Uh, and this also was the pattern in the ancient world. And um, I just think about this in, in, in terms of what we are facing uh, with the disasters that are striking these days. Who is it that often sees the greatest devastation, the loss of, of housing and, and, and life and, and uh, sustenance are those who are living on the margins, those who have the least ability uh, to react. And uh, often it is done in order to protect those who are more secure. So it's all about enhancing the security, but not necessarily above, of those uh, who need it most. Verse 6, I am going to bring it recovery and healing. I will heal them and reveal to them abundance and prosperity and security. What you are always looking for, of course, in the aftermath of uh, a disaster, abundance, prosperity and security. And what Jeremiah is saying, of course, is that this comes from the Lord. Uh, it does not come from uh, sacrificing the marginal and the poor, <laughs> those who are living on the edges of the city. It comes from the Lord. And uh, that God is actually angry at the inequity that does arrive in the face of disaster. Disasters will happen. You know, where God stands in the midst of a, a disaster like a hurricane, that's, that's a discussion from another day. But God is absolutely concerned about how injustice we react in these situations and who is protected and who gets to build prosperity in the aftermath. And it's not necessarily those who are living on the margin, who see the destruction firsthand. Just a, a bit of a different perspective on how we live in the midst of ongoing disasters and how we recover. Lord our God, I do pray for those who are recovering from Fiona, whether in Puerto Rico, whether in uh, uh, the eastern part of Canada. I pray for those who today, right now, are in the path of Ian, and I know that there will be so much destruction and that the recovery and healing is going to be so difficult. I pray that the people who need it most would get the support they need to be able to build, not only just to recover, but to build a better life for all. Amen.